Good morning. Welcome to Wisconsin for winter time. Yay. We wasted no time this year. It's like December 1st came and winter is here. So thank you for being brave and bold and coming out in the fun this morning. I know some of you are Sunday school moms and dads, so you were bringing kids for a Christmas service practice today, too. So that's, thank you for doing so. Uh, just to give you a quick update, Pastor Ehlert is back. He made it back to Chicago last night, and then they drove back through the, uh, the fun You're stuff. I'm on in there. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Well, let's see what that means. It should be sanctuary is muted. Now am I on in here yet? Yep, I'm on in here. I shouldn't be on in there. Am I on in there yet? Yes. Still? Okay. Well, we may just do without a microphone and a recording then today. That's, uh, that's going to be the easiest. Let's try that. Now is that better? Because I have a hunch the other microphone was the one that was being muted. Yeah. Now we're good. Okay. Now that's all going to be on the recording, so that'll be really interesting to listen to on the website someday. But uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, as I mentioned, Pastor Ehlert uh, made it back uh, f- uh, from overseas, uh, flew into Chicago last night, uh, was complaining. He likes to complain. You know. no, <laughs> he was complaining that it was 75 when he left uh, overseas and then got back to lovely weather in Chicago last night. So uh, he's going to be dealing with jet lag today, I'm sure. He was talking about maybe trying to come in to help Vicar with service. If he's here, great. If not, that's great, too, because he needs to, to readjust because uh, his body is telling him it's uh, almost Monday morning by this time. So... Uh, it just takes a little while to adjust. But things went well from what we know. We really kept uh, communication very low-key for two weeks uh, just because of security issues and things like that. So, but from what we know, everything went well. Changing gears, uh, yeah, we're going to start our new topic for today and the next two Sundays on Christians and conflict because, of course, Christians never have any conflict in their lives at all. Uh-uh, don't know what that's about one bit. Um, I, I will admit I'm a bit of a far side junkie, and I, 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 love, I love far side. I miss far side, you know. That, that was good always for a laugh in the morning with the, back in the day when there were morning newspapers in Appleton. And so the one with the dog in the corner uh, leading the cat astray into the dryer with the, the, the temptation of cat food. Cat food, that's how dogs spell. And, and then the dog in the corner going, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Uh, cats and dogs. Sometimes people are like cats and dogs, too, and we'll get a little bit into that today. Uh, we're going to cover a number of different topics. First one is an apology, and that is usually we're very good about giving you a brochure that covers you know, the span of the, of the uh, three weeks. In this case, uh, we had a little bit of a conflict with computer this week, and so um, all of a sudden I came in on, I think it was Thursday morning, and uh, most of my Bible class was gone. So uh, I was able to recreate enough for today. Next week we'll give you weeks two and three if you're here for that. Uh, why don't we start with a prayer, and then we'll get right into our discussion today. Heavenly Father, risen Savior, and Holy Spirit, we want to thank you again for a wonderful day that lies before us. Even though there maybe are some challenges with weather, we thank you for the opportunity to get together here at your house, to spend some time together with brothers and sisters in your word. Uh, Lord, we're talking about a topic that can be a little difficult at times, talking about conflict. Uh, you know what conflict is like, Lord, because uh, you see sin uh, every moment of every day in this world. And you understand conflict because you sent your son to cure us from the uh, awful illness of sin. But at the same time, Lord, you also give us your Holy Spirit. And your Holy Spirit is the one who leads us to peace and understanding and patience. And so we ask also for your Holy Spirit's presence here in Bible class today, too, so that the things we discuss are always going to be for our benefit, but more importantly, to bring glory to your name. We ask the Savior in your powerful and saving name. Amen. I'm going to start us off with an interesting little quote from uh, somebody that uh, has done a bit of understanding and writing about conflict. Conflict is a normal part of life. As long as you live around other people, you're going to find your opinions and actions bumping up against someone else's. Sometimes you'll be able to simply back off and go your own way. But you've probably discovered that sometimes walking away doesn't work. Many relationships are too important to walk away from. Some issues are too big to give in to. And some people just won't let go until they get everything they want. Add a variety of intense emotions to the mix, and conflict can get very messy and painful. But it doesn't have to be that way. 
Any initial thoughts or reactions as you hear that statement? And yes, this is a very sherry kind of Bible class these three weeks. <laughs> is conflict really a normal part of life? I wish it wasn't. <laughs> And chances are you probably wish it wasn't either. And that's part of what we'll get into uh, over these three weeks is uh, not only where conflict comes from or where we encounter it in our life, but also how do we handle it and are there maybe some ways that we can head it off or avoid it. And uh, like I said, one of the great blessings we have, of course, is the direction of God's word. Uh, I never want to treat the Bible as the answer to everything in life. You're not going to find any good pizza recipes in Scripture. You're not going to find any recommendations for a doctor in Scripture. So we never want to try and make God's Word do more than it was intended to do, which, of course, is be the history of God's people, the history of salvation, the way to heaven, if you will. That's really the, the main sole purpose of Scripture. At the same time, there are times that God, especially the Holy Spirit, does give us guidance, advice, direction for how to live holy lives to God's glory. And those are the portions of scripture that we will be taking a look at today and over the next two weeks in terms of, you know, what, what does God have to say to us about this topic of conflict in our lives? Just want to get a sense of where we're coming from in your respective lives. We're going to do a lot of discussing, reacting, and the first thing we're going to do are these three statements that you have there on your sheet. If you have a pen or pencil handy, great. If not, maybe you can do a little quick mental work. Otherwise, I've also got some pens here if you'd like. Hi, Neil. Got a brochure here right for you. Thank you. Thank you you betcha. <laughs> Absolutely. So, three statements there. Just very quickly react to them, whether you strongly disagree, don't care, or strongly agree. You just use those quick little metrics and uh, go ahead, give you about 30 seconds, and then we'll take a couple minutes to get your thoughts. Sure. Great. You bet. All right, time's up. We're not going to waste time here today. Any thoughts on, I feel that conflict is unhealthy and wrong? Well, I, I disagree because not everyone's going to agree. And sometimes the only way to find what's actually right is to have discussions and, and basically small conflict to prevent bigger conflicts. So sometimes there have to be small conflicts, disagreements, maybe we can use that phrase, to avoid bigger blow-ups. Okay. And the reason I'm repeating things is for two reasons. One, just make sure everybody else is hearing what Kurt says. And number two, so that if somebody is listening online later, since there are a number of people who couldn't be here today, that way they can follow in uh, on what we're discussing as well. So if it sounds like I'm repeating you, yes, I am. Any other thoughts, reactions to that first statement? Okay. All right, so this idea that dealing with the conflict when it surfaces rather than letting it brew. So, you would love my brother. My brother Ron, I love my brother. He's a great guy. He's the good looking, talented one in the family. He's 6'4, blonde hair, blue eyes, athletic, skilled. You know, does it sound like I'm jealous? Yes, absolutely. Um, but my brother and I are very different personalities. Ron was the, there's a problem, we're going to deal with it right now. The, the mashed, I can still remember the mashed potato fiasco at home when we were kids. The mashed potato, he was late for supper. Mom kept saying, supper's ready, you know, supper, come on, eat, supper's ready. He didn't come to the table right away. So when he sits down, the mashed potatoes are cold. Oh, the silverware goes flying, and the chair gets pushed back, and he storms off and slams his door. But then he's over it right away. He's one of those short fuse kind of people. So yes, deal with the conflict, deal with the issue, the problem right away, and then he's over it. Mike, on the other hand, is just the opposite. Mike is the, I'm smiling at you, even though I'm really mad at you because I don't want to take care of conflict right now. I'm going to put it off, but a boy, can I hold a grudge? 
I can still be mad about things from 30 years ago if I really let myself be. So yeah, I, good thought, Andy, that you know, dealing with conflict when it surfaces so it doesn't just build up, which is very often what happens for a lot of us. Good. Other thoughts? Yeah, Ken. And you're very welcome. These and some other statements that we're going to come across today and we said are intentionally loaded. I'll be very upfront about that. They are intentionally loaded. So it's hard to really be a fence sitter <laughs> on, on some of these. Like, well, no, 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 yep. So I certainly appreciate that thought. How about our next statement? I dislike conflict and will do whatever I can to avoid it. Interesting watching body language already this morning with people going, mm -hmm. you know. Understood. And even in these discussions, there's going to be some conflict, if I can use it in a very broad way. What I mean by that is I totally respect and get Ken's points before. At the same time, there's a part of me that's also going to say, I think there are times that conflict is necessary. So I can't always say that. And again, I agree, Ken, these statements are loaded. I can't say that all conflict is wrong. The Bible is chock full of conflict. Some of it is definitely not pleasing to God, but then there are other times that God is somewhat the one who initiates the situation that leads to some conflict, and, and there are reasons for why he's done that. Um, and we'll get, we'll get to an example of that in just a moment. How about our next one? I think conflict can be a good thing. It bothered me as a kid when we'd get to that Bible lesson about Jesus and the cleaning out the temple, cleaning out the tax collectors and so from the temple. I'm like, oh, Jesus is mad. Oh. Yeah, he was for good reason. Kicking over tables and, and the things that went on because he had that, to use the phrase, righteous anger. An anger, a, a conflict situation because something has to be addressed. Um, and so there are times that, yeah, conflict is, is uh, right or it's the needed thing. I think we, most of us would agree that, unfortunately, our world is also filled with a lot of unnecessary conflict or conflict for reasons that just boggle our minds. And unfortunately, we see how it gets addressed too often in our country, uh, and that's through the use of weapons. Um, it's, just, it's just a sad fact that the United States is a very weapon-happy country compared to other countries around the world. This is not a pro-con, Second Amendment kind of comment. It's just an observation of what's happening in our country um, uh, more and more often these days. just heard the other day that the, in the U.S., life expectancy has gone down for the second year in a row. 
life expectancy in our country was going up for years, people were living longer, healthier lifestyles, da da da. But between violence, weaponry, and uh, increase, uh, rapid increase all of a sudden again in the, in the suicide rate, and the opioid, opioid crisis is a big one. Uh, here in Green Bay, too, almost weekly now we're seeing it in the newspaper, young men or women, obituaries, because of uh, the uh, opioid uh, overdosing situations. Um, working with the police department, you know, they're carrying the pen, the, the, the version of the EpiPen, if you will, uh, that's uh, used for uh, trying to uh, um, offset overdoses. And it's, it's a reality uh, in our country. So, yeah, second year in a row now, life expectancy in the U.S. is starting to curl down a little bit. Sad fact. All right, any other comments or questions on that section before we move on? All right, thank you. Here's what we're going to cover over the next uh, three, the, today and the next two weeks. Uh, what are some sources of conflict? How might personality types uh, affect conflict? And that's where we're going to spend the chunk of our time in just a few moments. What other aspects might affect conflict? Then next week, what can I do to help avoid conflict? What can I do to help con or to handle conflict when it happens? And what can I do to resolve conflict? And that's going to be a key one and something that's somewhat unique for us as Christians, being able to resolve conflict. Now a personal... Oh, and just, by the way, over all of these things, in them, through them, we're going to take a look at what does God have to say to us. That's a crucial thing. There's a difference between how the world addresses conflict resolution and how we as Christians can. And that key difference, of course, is uh, God's word and the presence of his Holy Spirit. Um, now a little personal commercial, if you will. Uh, I'm just going to read this straight up because I think it's very important. Conflict can be a difficult, tough, and touchy thing to discuss. During these three Sunday mornings, I will share some very candid things about myself, how I was raised, and how I've been involved in or dealt with conflict. Others here may also share some difficult moments from their own personal lives. We will laugh, I can guarantee it. We will laugh about a number of things, and we may also find we are moved by some of the things we'll be discussing. Because, since we are all brothers and sisters of our brother Jesus, we can have this very open family discussion and be respectful of one another. You may walk out of here after three weeks going, wow, that Mike guy is weird. And you will be absolutely right. I have no doubt about that at all. At the same time, hopefully we'll also have a respect for one another to say, wow, that person's really been through some situations I never would have been through. You may also find yourself going, well, I wouldn't have handled that situation the way that person did. That's okay. Again, we can have those uh, differences of opinion, but we'll always want to be respectful of one another as fellow Christians. A little quick 60-second uh, brainstorming. Where have you personally encountered conflict in your life? Just go ahead and shout something out that comes into your mind. I'm sorry, what was the first one? Family. Family. Work. Work. Friends. Friends. <laughs> Even in churches? <laughs> sure, sure. Conflict happens in churches. We're going to get to a situation at the end of class today, and we'll talk about some other ones in, in future weeks as well. Yeah, of course churches are going to be a, a, a location of conflict. You know who wants things not to go well here? The enemy. You bet he's going to try to, uh, to uh, cause conflict in our church and others. That's, that's part of his game. That's part of his goal. So I heard the big three. Family, work, <laughs> and everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, especially family and work seem to be two locations where we encounter a lot of our conflict. Um, families, we love one another in our families. Doesn't mean we always agree with one another. Um, there are, again, situations come up where we have to deal with things. We're dealing with one right now with our 82-year-old uh, dad. Dad is bound and determined. He's going to you know, stay in the house until whenever, and we're already going, oh boy. Um, he has pretty much lost complete vision in his left eye, but the eye doctor says as long as his right eye is good and he has a little bit of um, peripheral vision out of his left eye, he can still drive. <sighs> Macular degeneration has pretty much wiped out his left eye except for some peripheral vision. 
And so his right eye is good, no glasses, left eye, little peripheral vision. The eye doctor says, yep, you can drive. And my brother and I are like, oh. <laughs> so when I was down a couple months ago, I noticed that the uh, driver's side mirror on the car was gone. <laughs> Apparently took it out with the garage when he was backing out of the car, backing out of the garage one day. So there's going to be some conflict in our family going forward in the next few months and years. You know, home health care, different things like that. We will see. But does it mean we don't love Dad? Of course not. Of course we love Dad. But it's also going to mean we're going to have eventually have some of those sit down, <clears throat> all the cards on the table kind of conversations with an elderly parent. Those things happen. But again, it's done in the spirit of love and care. Um, work. What makes conflict at work tricky? Or, so many personalities that are in one spot, and everybody has a different viewpoint of what they're doing or what they're looking at or what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, who makes you think that you're supposed to be doing this? All right, different person. All right, different personalities, different ideas, different approaches, yeah, different backgrounds. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, there could be some competition at work based on what you do. Okay. Competition at work? And was that all the time? Is that what I heard? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And is it a small business with just two, three, four employees? Okay, well, then, you know, you're, you're always in kind of tight uh, uh, connections with one another. Or even, or in a much bigger company, you know, I think of like a, a Schneider International where there's hundreds, if not thousands of employees. And uh, that might be competition and all kinds of different things, you know, climbing the ladder and all those things going on. So, yeah, you've got... You get to get up in the morning and go to work and deal with comp uh, conflict there. Come home at night and deal with conflict in the family. Gee, life is just wonderful. Um, we're going to take a little, little bit of a look at Scripture because we want to also understand where the conflict comes from. Yes, different personalities, different ideas. Those, that's kind of how it um, displays itself. But where's the real root of the conflict? Somebody like to uh, read our quotation from James here for us out loud, please. Oh, great, thank you. <laughs> so to sum it up in a three-letter word, conflict comes from sin. Yeah, yeah, sin is in us, sin is around us. Um, and so there's just going to be conflict in this lifetime. Uh, it can take on different sizes and shapes and how we deal with it, how we handle it. Those are some of the things that we're going to continue to discuss. But just want to be very uh, clear that um, that's where it roots itself. Whether, whether the person that you're in a conflict with understands, has a spiritual understanding of sin, and the nature of sin, um, that's a whole different topic. But for you and for me as, as God's people, we understand that's where that sin comes from. And, of course, it goes right back to the very, inter, the very first interpersonal conflict. The first conflict was God and Satan, but now when you actually involve people, Adam and Eve. And I have to give God a lot of credit. I don't think I would have been as nice. <laughs> you know, Adam, what's going on? <laughs> And then he pulls out the double barrel. This is just classic human, human nature. Adam pulls out the double barrel. Well, Lord, it's that woman that you gave me. Whose fault was it? No, everybody but Adam. That, that woman. Oh, that's a... <laughs> Talk about family conflict. Ooh, it must have been awfully chilly <laughs> that night. And yeah, so, so blaming Eve, blaming God. And of course, Eve, not much differently, you know, well, it was the serpent. Notice it's not a snake. That's always a key uh, differentiation in Scripture. It talks about a serpent first. Um, so it was the serpent, da 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 da. So there's this deflecting that happens very easily when conflict starts to set in. And that's, of course, what happened there uh, right off the bat. Interesting comment about different, you said different personalities. Okay, that's where we're going to go next. Understanding that you and I are different people. The people in your family are different and unique people. The people that you work with are different and unique people. Yes, we all wish they were just like Dan Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, if we just everybody. If everybody was like Dan, everything would be fine. If everybody was like Kurt, everything would be fine. But we're not. We're all different. We have different backgrounds and experiences, and Scripture is going to bear this out for us. Um, I'll read the first one, Psalm 139. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God designed me to be different than Lisa. Lisa is different than uh, Mark. And, and you know, right on down the line, we're all designed differently by a wonderful God. Somebody would like to read our next one from 1 Corinthians, please. Sure you do, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, thank you. So what are the differences that you're hearing about there? Yep. How we are gifted, the abilities and talents we have. Yep. How we go about serving, how we go about doing things in God's kingdom, how we work. Let's expand it beyond what those words say there. What are some other differences between and among people. I heard Bev mention personalities before. Different roles that we play. How we were brought up, our histories, our backgrounds. Different life experiences. Our objectives, our goals and like. Our interests. Our genders. Mmm, we're going to have fun with that one next week. <laughs> Don't go there. Oh, Ken, this is so much fun next week. <laughs> Will he be walking home today, Bev? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. And in our last one before we get into our next topic, Romans 12. In one body, we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function. Again, that that different roles, the different jobs that we all have in our families, in our workplaces, and in God's kingdom. Now, where this is leading us to is a discussion about bees. Now you're like, wait a minute, what's going on? What I mean by that is, you may in your workplaces have seen or heard about different personality types. Uh, There are things that some of you may have heard, like the um, DISC, the D-I-S-C. Others maybe are familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality assessments, those types of things. Well, I like to keep it a little bit lighter, and so we're going to deal with bees for a few moments today. And if you wouldn't mind taking one and passing some down, and Lisa, if I could hand you some to pass down your way, and Kurt, likewise, for your table, and I'll give some to Judy here, and then I'll go down to the other end by Gary and give them some. This is just a different uh, way of looking at personality types. Is there anything here that is right from Scripture? No. But again, it reflects this idea that we are different people, different personalities, different backgrounds, and so forth. I'm just going to take a quick second to go through as I lose my microphone. Just going to touch on each one of these very, very quickly. There is the honeybee personality, the fun-loving, outgoing, personable-type person. There are the king or queen bee personalities, the ones who like to take charge, the leadership, that type of thing. Worker bees, they're the loyal, dependable people. You can always count on them. If they say they're going to get something done, they're going to get something done. And the spelling bees. If you know an accountant, you know a spelling bee because they are very precise. They like rules. They like working with numbers and facts and figures. They are the spelling bees in life. Now, what we're going to do is go back to your flyer, your brochure, and there are eight statements there. And again, we're just going to ask you to have a gut reaction to these. Don't, don't spend a lot of time on any one of them. But as you read each statement, if you agree with that statement, please circle the letter behind it. If you don't agree with one of those eight statements, don't circle the letter behind it. So we're going to give you a whole 90 seconds to do all eight of these. So ready, go.
And for the people who are listening on the internet right now, the dead silence is because uh, we are taking a look at eight statements that will kind of help us uh, evaluate what our personality type or types might be. And we're going to hear some uh, comments from folks in about 30 more seconds. All right, if you haven't quite finished up, that's okay. We're just going to uh, keep rolling here in the interest of time. Would anybody care to share with us which one, what is one of the statements that they circled that they believe applies to them? Yes, please. Okay, so the only one you didn't circle. So you don't like being liked, in other words. Okay, that's all right. No, that's, that's fine. No, it's not important to you. It's not important to you. Understood. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, I think we just heard a little something emerge there. <laughs> but that, that's right, yeah. As, as, a, as a boss, as a, and I will have to, I have to give you a little admission of the background to the, to the bees. The bees are something that I, I learned from one of my previous senior pastors up in the Twin Cities, Mark Leesner. Mark would do presentations uh, on personality types. In fact, because of the size of our congregation in Minnesota and the size of our staff, when new people joined our staff, we had them take a personality uh, assessment. We did the DISC uh, up in Minneapolis. Uh, we would use the DISC because that would help us understand what he or she, what his or her personality type was like, and how it would interact with the rest of us on the staff. Uh, my boss, my boss, my senior pastor, Mark Leesner, definitely a, a, a king bee, or as he would call it, the killer bee. Uh, the killer bee is the one who's like, take charge, you know, the leadership type, absolutely. Anybody else would like to share one of their uh, statements that they agreed with? Judy. I enjoy spending time with people. If you don't talk to them, how do you know what they're like? Okay. What they're interested in. They went on trips. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, oh, please. Would somebody like to share with us, kind of like you did, would somebody like to share with us one of the ones that they did not circle? Don't worry, nobody's going to hate you. <laughs> nobody's going to judge you. Yeah, Bev. Um, I don't enjoy working with numbers and statistics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says as she sits next to the tax accountant. <laughs> And thank God for people that don't like working with numbers. Thank God for people that do like working with numbers. We need them all. Thank God for people who like being leaders. Thank God for people who don't like being leaders. Because I'm sure there are some of us here that would categorize themselves that way. I know some people who don't like to be leaders. Because they don't like dealing with all the headaches of management. And that goes with it. I totally get that. All right, your turn to pick on me. Where do I fall? Honey bee, king bee, spelling bee, worker bee. Go ahead. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I heard a honey bee. I guess you're a unique blend of all of Most of us are a blend. Very few of us, <laughs> don't take this the wrong way if you're like, oh, I'm just this. If you're just one of these, you're a little out of balance. <laughs> and, and that sometimes happens. We see that particularly with king bees or queen bees. If they are so self-absorbed, if they are so tied into themselves that it's me, 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 I'm the boss, I'm the leader, da, 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 that, that can be a little unhealthy. And of course, conversely, if somebody is a real strong honeybee, oh, they're the life of the party. They are great to be around. They're an awesome friend. But don't expect them to be the most responsible type of people in the world. I, I will, oh, thank you, Ken, for your comment. I appreciate that. Sure. 
Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I get that. Um, if it helps a little bit, I'm a firstborn. I'm the first son. I'm the first kid to my parents. Worse yet, I was the first grandchild to both sets of grandparents. So from little on, I wasn't a child. I was raised as a small adult from little on. Oh, look, Mike's, Mike's talking. Oh, Mike's walking. Oh, Mike's going to school. You know, I, my childhood was very much being the responsible one. There were some good things to that. You know, I got the driver's license first before my brother did. <laughs> you know, I didn't get the hand-me-down clothes that my brother did. But the flip side was, oh, Mike, oh, Mike. The pedestal started getting higher and higher and higher to the point that it got unrealistic that as a young adult, I nearly crashed and burned. It was not pretty because I started buying into that stuff of, oh, Mike, oh, Mike, oh, Mike, he's the family minister. Oh, Mike, he's, you know. And it got to the point where um, I developed very strong workaholic tendencies. I, people sometimes laugh when I tell them I'm a recovering workaholic, but that's true. I am. I, I would go 16, 18 hours a day and think nothing of it. That's unhealthy. Perfectionistic. <sighs> Horrible perfectionist in my teens and 20s. Get a B in school? <sighs> Not acceptable for Mike. Now, so a lot of unhealthy things happened in my younger years that, thank God, people around me helped me you know, tackle some of those. So, Ken, I, I get where you're, where you're seeing the, the, the worker, you know, um, ah, sorry about that. You can see, you know, getting to be the, the worker bee. Yeah, that's there. Unfortunately, I also have a strong, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but I have some of the unhealthy aspects of being the killer bee, king bee kind of thing. The part of me I like is the honeybee. Oh, I was a blast in college. Because I was the honeybee? Oh, guess who gets elected to be class president? Oh, because you're class president, guess who gets to be in charge of all the parties on the weekend that have to be organized? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But again, that became a very self-perpetuating and somewhat self-defeating type of thing then, too, after a while. So I, I thank God that he's brought me to a little bit healthier balance than, than it, what, what it was for a while, because it wasn't very healthy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, other comments? Pastor Ehlert's not here. Otherwise, it was my intent that we would pick on him next. <clears throat> but if somebody wants to, go ahead. <laughs> I think you might be surprised if what he would classify himself as. Any thoughts? Because he and I have been through something along these lines already. So we have a pretty good understanding of one another. Bit of a spelling bee? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Loves to read. Loves to read. He reads French philosophers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he describes himself as very, um, uh, n not an outgoing type of personality. I'm trying to think of the word right now when somebody's... Uh, introvert. introvert, yeah. He describes himself as an introvert. And I'm like, you're not an introvert. Oh, yes, Mike, I'm a big introvert. I'm like, really? Yeah, he is. He's very much... So, Judy, he loves being around people in a setting like this, but as soon as church is over, you know, I think, he's home, you know, cocoons himself off a little bit. Now, that's not a bad thing, because in this line of work where we're with people a lot, you do need those times to just, you know, kind of shut out the world a little bit. For me, it's mowing lawn or, you know, doing outside work. That's my me time. <clears throat> because who's going to bother me when I'm mowing the lawn? You know, nobody. I'm just doing my thing in my head, uh, listening to my uh, pods and stuff. Um, so that's, that's for, for me to get away from the world, so to speak. But yeah, Pastor Ehlert described himself as very much an introvert. I still am not 100% convinced, but I will take him at his word. So. Anybody else want to share something about themselves before we move on to another phase of this? Okay. Quick question, how does this play into conflict at work or family? Or how might it play into conflict at work or family? Well, you might expect people to be closer to you. So if you're used to getting things done and someone's off goofing around, that could be conflict. 
So you take a workaholic like me. What's about the worst group of people that you could put me into? Indecisive procrastinators. Put me in a meeting where we talk for 20 minutes about one thing and can't make a decision, and I'm ready to go out the window. I, you know, that's, that's not me. I'm like, okay, we talked about it. Let's make a decision. Next. What's the next thing? Let's move. And so I have to be careful because then I become, and Gary will vouch for this because Gary was at a meeting a couple weeks ago when I pulled this very trick on, on people. You know, I get to a point where I'm like, oh, okay, we've been talking about this, we've been talking about this, talking about it. And so Mike got very whiny. Oh, it was awful. It was pathetic. Gary, at Tuesday night's meeting, Gary's on our building committee with us. At Tuesday night's meeting, I already have a little sign made that I'm going to have right in my folder. You guys may not see it, but it's going to be right in my folder where it says, shut up. And that's going to be my little note to myself to be quiet for the bulk of the meeting. I might say one or two things, but for the bulk of the meeting, it's Mike, shut up. I don't care. You know, if everybody wants to talk about whatever for 20 minutes, Mike is going to shut up. Otherwise, Mike will get whiny and get impatient and insensitive to other people in the room. And that's what Mike did two weeks ago. I'm sorry. Okay. Other issues that may come up because of differences in personality at home or at work. Please. I think as you get older, you can start to blend a little more. But for most of my life, I would have been like a uh, upper right. Um, for nobody ever had any issues with me. Mm-hmm. One problem we have in that situation is conflict doesn't bother me. Like, I, you know, I, and even to this day, if the conflict should bother me at times, that it doesn't. Because if conflict doesn't bother you, Solution to the conflict can get you in trouble. And that's what I've experienced a lot in my own life. So, you know, like keeping your mouth shut, that's a hard thing for me to do, but that's usually the best. Like walk away from it or calm down or because you know when you when you don't have patience when you're like pushy and and you know, I all the bad things, I mean I you know, insensitive, you know, I suck it up and say oh, you, you know, I mean that's that's me. I, it's hard to to live your life that way. So for those of us who are king bees, queen bees, killer bees, yeah, our our bumper sticker is get over it. You know, if there's a conflict, get over it, all right? We're moving on. But for other personality types, that's That's horrible, horrible. yeah. It's like, they just told me to get over it. But I need time. I need time to process this. I I want to talk about this. Um, I'm I'm feeling terrible. We internalize, yeah. Exactly. And the perfectionist, and the perfectionist in me takes that too. It's just like, oh, somebody's mad at me. Oh, I need to fix this. Oh, you know. But yeah. that's what you have to listen to too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I was sure. raised with keep work at work or home at home. But when you come home from work, your significant other always asks you how was your day? <laughs> how do you balance that? That's a big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are you today? Fine. Sometimes that person that you're married to or your significant other, you can trust so much that you can unload on them, but if you unload too much, you text them because they feel bad for you. That's the balance that I always struggle with. Sure. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you. For those of us who are currently married, or if you have been married at some point in time, do you find that your personality type meshes or matches the personality type of your spouse, or are they different? Just curious. Yes. Yes. (laughs) 
all of the above, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and get over it. So, <laughs> and it is. There probably is some of that both. And and some, I think it was Ken that made the comment before about as we grow older. My word, my phrase is as we mature, because I really do think the Holy Spirit does grow us and mature us as we go through life. Maybe it, maybe the Holy Spirit takes off some of the hard edges, <laughs> or He mellows us in some ways. Um, we encounter more and more people that help us see other sides of life or other aspects of life. And so I, I think that, yeah, we, we do grow that way. And too, as you get older, you see things really are not as important as they were when you were younger. And it's just like, if that's the way you want to be, you know, let's just move on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Judy. Yeah, I just want to repeat what Judy said. You can't change other people. I know sometimes some of us go into marriage thinking that, you know, like, well, you know, he's nice or she's nice, but we'll work on that later. I'll, I'll fix that later. Uh, it doesn't necessarily happen that way in, in marriage. Granted, again, there can be that, that melding and that coming closer to one another in terms of personality types. Communication styles, one we're going to talk about next week. That's another biggie is how we communicate because guess what? Depending upon your personality type, your personality style, that also impacts and affects how you communicate. Some people are short and sweet. Three guesses which. <laughs> and then there are other folks that want to talk everything out. No, neither one of those is bad. I don't, don't, I don't want to give that impression. It's just that they're different. And because of those differences, it's that understanding of how we then work together, live together, and so forth. Okay, uh, we're coming down to just the last couple minutes, so we're going to uh, move pretty quickly. On the back page, we're just going to get to one or two things there. First of all, what might be some other factors besides personality types? And we have mentioned a couple of them already, so feel, feel, feel free to blurt some out. The one that Ken and Tom don't want to talk about, <laughs> gender. Gender is a big one. Backgrounds and histories. Other things that might affect issues of conflict? Money. Money. Okay. What's your financial status or what how did you grow up, you know, with finance? With money. Thank you. Background. Yep. Opinions. Ethnicity. Ethnicity, thank you. Very, very big in our country right now. It's very interesting. The United States has been multicultural probably from its outset, um, and yet it just seems that it's becoming a more focused issue now. And that's, there's all kinds of sides to that uh, topic, too. Yes, Ken. Oh, no, it's fine. Thank you. you. You just touched us up. We're going to get to either next week or the third week probably, and that's triggers. You know, what, what, what are our personal triggers uh, you know, that, that have an impact there too for us? I want to finish up with just two last things in a prayer so we can be on time. Uh, this uh, verse from 1 Peter, and I'm, I'm just going to focus on the first part for a moment. Finally, all of you be like-minded. Uh, the Greek word there is kind of a one mind, a, a harmony, kind of like you think of a, a band or an orchestra. All different instruments playing different notes, but they harmonize. They, they work together to give you the beautiful symphony uh, effect. And that's, that's the concept that, that God has for us here today. Different people, different backgrounds, different ages, different genders, you know, all those things that we've been talking about. But when it comes down to it, God wants us to harmonize, to be like-minded, one-minded, uh, uh, and, and we'll come back to some of those, those uh, other um, characteristics that go with that for God's people. Uh, before we close with prayer, I want to dump one on your lap. What I mean by that is, here's a situation. You can take it home, kind of think about it, and, and then we'll come back and talk about it for a moment or two next week. 
Vicar knows about this, so it's, you know, if you see him after a while and you go up to him, I told him, I said, if people come up to you after your Bible class going, oh, Vicar, are you in trouble? Yes, he, he knows. He's expecting this. He's expecting this. So here's the situation. Oh, I'm sorry. These are the things we're going to talk about next week. Apologize. So here it is. Two weeks ago, Mr. Hartman, who was an imaginary person, don't worry, Mr. Hartman asked Pastor if he would please have someone visit his elderly mother who recently was moved to a nursing home just up the street from church. The next day, Pastor had a bunch of things going on, so he asked Vicar if he would please visit Mr. Hartman's elderly mother, and Vicar said he would do that. Then, the following week, so like last week, the Pastor got a phone call from Mr. Hartman wondering why no one had visited his mother yet. Uh, Pastor was kind of surprised, apologized, and assured him she would be visited this week. So Pastor asked Vicar why he hadn't made the visit. Vicar, totally embarrassed, told him that he forgot to write it down. It slipped his mind. He preached last week. He's preaching this Sunday. He promised Pastor that he would see her the next day. You can smell what's coming, can't you? Mm -hmm. Now it's today, and in about 10 minutes, Mr. Hartman is going to come storming in that door and in front of a fellowship hall and church full of members and visitors, just lay into Pastor Ehlert. Why haven't you guys visited my mom yet? Twice I asked you to. Twice nobody has shown up. What kind of church is this anyway? Have a nice weekend. You can come back and let us know what your advice for Pastor Ehlert will be next week. Well, as I, as I, I, in my mind, I'm going, okay, well, if somebody asked me what I would do, um, I would take a call to another church. That's probably what I would do. There's a lot of vacancies out there right now. I'll find another place to hide out. So uh, thank you for your wonderful participation today. Lord's blessings on your day. How about we close with a quick prayer, and we will be on our way. Uh, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, and Savior, thank you for, again, this opportunity to spend time in your word, to be reminded that you have made us your blood-washed uh, holy people. Uh, but at the same time, Lord, you've made us different, unique, uh, different backgrounds, personalities, and so forth. And we praise you for that. At the same time, Lord, we need your help to learn how to work together to uh, not let the enemy get a toehold into our lives, into our work, into our families, and especially into your church here at Beautiful Savior. Uh, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd have your holy angels go with and watch over everyone here today, help them to get home safely, and if it be your will, Lord, give us a new day tomorrow to uh, work for you and uh, to bring glory to your name. We ask this in your name, Savior. Amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We will, Lord willing, see you next Sunday.